and we only know one AP voter. We only know one. Yeah. Best one. AP we love. He he made like a watch list. Yeah. For who's going to win different awards. <clears throat> this dude's in his second year. Okay. Already in an AP voters MVP watch list. Jeez. Oh. Okay. Last year. This dude went absolutely bananas, was so good that people say, hey, this guy's got to be cheap. Mm -hmm. Now, he struggles when he comes to Indianapolis, even though he wins. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, CJ Stroud. Hey, CJ. Hey. 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 CJ, how you doing, man? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm good. Hey, just a uh, quick question. It doesn't appear as if you got worse this year. <laughs> sucks. That sucks. Uh, not happy about it, but how do you feel in this second year? You feel like an old man out there? You feel like a vet? How do you feel week to week? Are you still getting better, or are we already at our max year two in the AFC South terrorizing everybody, CJ? Uh, I feel like I'm still getting better week to week. You know, um, a lot of defense are playing me a little different, you know, just trying to take me away, um, you know, playing a lot of deep coverage, a lot of too high shell. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to process that, but I feel like week to week I'm getting better. I think the last two weeks are definitely some of my best games. And, you know, I'm just still growing and still continuing to just challenge myself every weekend, week in and week out just to, you know, find ways to get wins. So you talk about that two-eye coverage. That's actually a big part of the conversation about the modern NFL right now. Mel Kuyper Jr. actually went on television <laughs> and said, we need to ban cover two because of what it's doing to NFL offenses. You just talked about learning it. What does that mean for you? What is it, just taking the easy one as opposed to always taking the shot or trying to dissect the defense a little bit more? What do you mean by that whenever you say trying to figure out cover two a little bit more? Uh, I would say, I mean, it's you, you, I've been planning against it forever, but, you know, um, it's – it's a defensive philosophy, in my opinion, like bend, don't break, um, and just make you snap it over and over and over and over, you know? So, I mean, that's where I think we can get better for the Texans, just, you know, being able to get our running game going a little more. Also, you know, not taking any – or not just getting cheap penalties uh, because then that puts you in a, in a backed-up situation or first and 20, second and 20, first and 15, second and 15. I mean, you're living on third down, and it's hard to live on third down in the NFL. So, um, I would say, like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, taking what what's there. I'm taking the shots when I see them, um, but also, you know, just you know, being able to stay in the positive, stay in the green is what we talk about here. And I think, you know, that's kind of what defenses are doing nowadays. To, you know, some of the premier quarterbacks. You see, Mahomes gets it a, a ton. Josh Allen gets it a ton. You know, it's hard to always just be patient. You sometimes you just want to force it down the field. So, um, you know, it's just a lot of maturity that you, you have to have at this position when you're, you know, looked at as one of the guys that can, you know, beat a defense and they, they want to take you away. Okay, so let's talk about that maturity a little bit. Do you think it's because you played so much ball at Ohio State that you just kind of drop in here and you're a 90-year-old man at the most important position <laughs> in the NFL? Why do you think you have that maturity level already? Uh, yeah, I would say it has to do somewhat in my, my time at Ohio State. Definitely prepared me. You know, not only on the field but off as well. Um, so I would honestly say just just who I am, kind of as a person. I, I think I've always kind of been a mature kid since I've been little. Now, like I'm just maturing as a man. But um, I definitely think as you talk to like as I talk to defenses around the league after games, they're like, "Man, we're gonna take you away and force other guys to beat us." So um, you know, and I, I think that that's a, a sign of respect. You know, but also, you know, um, we're still finding ways to win, which which that is what matters at the end of the day. Yeah, and you're still finding deep shots. I mean, you had one of the coldest celebrations <laughs> this last weekend. I mean, this ball, obviously in a bucket, but then the, the hands crossed, arms crossed. Mm. Todd, Nico, we'll talk about him here in a little bit, your connection, and obviously him being weak to weak. And that's one of the coldest reactions I've seen in some time. We knew we were doing this. If the, <laughs> the next shot or just in the moment felt like this was the right reaction. Uh, I feel like it was just the right reaction. It was kind of just I, – I didn't plan on it, um, but I kind of did something similar last year. But, you know, just you know, just reminding myself and, you know, re remind everybody it's regular, you know. Just, you know, you, give me, you mess up, you give me the shot, I'm going to take it, you know, and I'm going to just make you pay. So, um, no, I just I, – I often just have to remind myself too. Like, I'm still that guy. I can still play this game at a very, very high level. So I think that was just like one of those moments like, yeah, like it's like that. So I'd remind this, everybody I'm not always that way. I'd remind but. everybody this is regular. That is a awesome that is an awesome response. Let me talk to you about a third down week one in the loud house. I know you <laughs> I know you experienced the loud house. I know your ears are still buzzing because of Indianapolis. You made this throw. It was an out, I believe to Nico. Third and eleven, fourth quarter. We were charging back. That ball right there. Okay. Hey, listen. 
That shit can't be happening against Indianapolis anymore. You hear me? <laughs> That's one of the nicest throws of all time. And you, you say, like, I have to remind people this is regular. Is there throws or is there moments in games where after something happens, you go, damn, I can't believe that happened? Is that happening still to you? Or is everything legitimately expected at this point? That should have been picked off, batted down, and too far out of bounds. Instead, you thread two needles, and then you make a first down to win the game pretty much in Indianapolis. It's like, this is just what this guy does. Is there anything that surprises you anymore, or do you have full confidence in everything you're doing? I would say I have full confidence. You know, um, I'm very – humble at the same time, but I know what I can do on the field. I know that uh, there's no defense for the perfect throw. So I just really, it's just, you know, you got to just be able to focus in those moments. Uh, I, I seen you and, uh, and Tyrese over there okay. uh, going crazy. <laughs> um, so, you know, I had, a, I had a hush y'all boys. I was trying to look at y'all after uh, I think y'all y'all left. Y'all beat the traffic. Okay. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not true. Not whoa, true. Whoa. Whoa. These tight true. streets down there. I was trying to find you. Uh, yeah. There was uh, there was this thing going on. It was a meet and greet. It was uh, yeah. You had that meeting. Yeah. There was a thing going on. Don't you worry about it. it. Seems like every time you come, those meetings come a little bit sooner every single time. Uh, let's talk about your cast around you. Obviously, we just talked about Nico there. I think he's week to week with a hamstring, and then Mixon was banged up a little bit. Dalton Schultz was banged up a little bit. Have you had the full cast yet? And how do you feel about the offense this year versus last year? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, week one was probably the only time we had everybody, um, and you know, it's kind of. What I learned last year is uh, you you don't really get to play with your starters all the time. You know, you have to find ways to win in this league, you know, sometimes without some of your, your best guys. And, I mean, I think that's a testament to, like, who you are as a, as a quarterback or who you are as a player. And I challenge myself when that happens of just, you know, how good can I be today to take a little bit of um, slack or take a little bit of pressure off the guy who's filling in the starter's position to, you know, get another win. Um, and, you know, I feel like, that was something that I learned last year. Um, but as, you know, time goes, you get guys back, other guys get hurt. It's kind of just what, you know, the fo football thing is the worst thing about it is injuries. So, you know, you got to be able to deal with it and, you know, take each step each and every day to better yourself so you can better guys around you. So, um, you know, I definitely feel like once we do get a lot of our guys back, because we, we've been missing them for about two, three weeks now, um, and guys been in and out, some guys, you know, uh, are week to week now. But uh, as, as you see, man, we're still finding ways to win, which is the most important thing. But, um, you know, definitely wish those guys were healthy and now like, they'll be back soon. Next Colts game, you guys should just take off. Yeah, be cool. Yeah. A few weeks. Just take it off. <laughs> just say, yeah, it's a couple <laughs> bye weeks. Long, yeah, right. Long yeah. season. Everybody say 17 games? Long season. You deserve two bye weeks. I mean, if it's the last game, they might not have to play anyways. All right. It's not. Come on. Okay, just enough of what you're saying. Joey yeah. Flax going banana, CJ. I don't know if you know that. Connor has a no, – he looks good. Okay, listen, the way, you know, like the whole thing. I like Joe. He Joe played good great. at the Stroudhouse. I like Ant, too. Ant balled against us, man. I'd love to see it. I don't, I, you know, like, of course not against us, but, you know, Ant's been playing some good ball. Um, you know, I, there are divisional opponents, and I think one of our rivals. So, you know, I, I, I'm not somebody who just, like, doesn't respect good ball. When I see it, you guys are playing some good ball, y'all, you know. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. That's very kind Beat of Beat the Steelers. That was a good win. Yeah, I, I respect good ball when I see it. Thank you. Yeah. And for that, you should take the game off against us. <laughs> that would be awesome. No, yeah, that would be very cool. That would be very good leadership of you. Con Man has a question for you, CJ. The Colts just shouldn't have to play in Jacksonville. But, CJ, looking at a week-to-week -week basis Agreed, for you, for preparation-wise, does D'Amico help with kind of assessing what a defense is going to do on, you know, a week-to-week -week basis against you? Because, uh, you know, looking back, with Tom and Bill Belichick, they would have weekly meetings and Bill would just tell Tom, like, hey, this is what they're going to try and do. This is what they usually like to do, their tendencies and things of that nature. Do you do that with D'Amico or are you typically just working with Bobby and sticking to the plan that he uh, puts together for you guys? He's very frozen. He's been frozen since halfway through your answer. You powered through that very well. I I, I, could, I wasn't even yeah. looking. You with with Bobby, but... Um, Here it is. I <laughs> Can y'all hear me? You have no service down there, uh -oh, CJ. I, think I mean, uh, you sat there. Casario on. probably Hello? just throwing over. You there? Come on, Nick. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. What's going on? This is the deal. As soon as we start talking about I mean, the Colts, he starts complimenting the Colts. All yep. of a sudden, they start shutting it down down there. Hey, yeah. if you, if you, what's oh. that all about? If, oh, you don't, if, you're not pushing, if you're not pushing Joe Flacco, then I don't think the internet wants to hear your shit. Hey, CJ. CJ, good to see you. Uh, Boost Mobile over here. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, from what I've been told, the boost actually might be safe. in a good spot uh -huh. because of potential other hacking going on. Nonetheless, we don't need to dive too far into that. Thank you for joining us. We thought there was a chance they cut it down because you complimented Colts, which we appreciate. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do appreciate that. So, uh, so, but so. back to what Connor was asking you. Do you and D'Amico sit down and chit-chat about defenses and what they're probably going to try to do against you like Bill Belichick and Tom Brady did? Or do you stay on the offensive side of this entire thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, me and Bobby usually meet before the week and, you know, go over, you know, the defenses and what we expect to see. Um, but, you know, D'Amico will give me little nuggets here and there on, you know, uh, just philosophy on what they're trying to do um, and also just, like, certain plays on, like, what to look for. So, you know, he definitely helps me, um, you know, um, see what, like, the big picture of that style of defense we play throughout that week because, I mean, he's he's been – a coordinator in this league for a long time. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of both. How's D'Amico this year, second-year head coach as opposed to first? Now, obviously, uh, you will say you don't know what other coaches are like around the NFL. You've only been in the NFL for two years because you say everything right all the time, which is why they need to trade you out of the AFC South, okay? Mm -hmm. But how, what have you seen from Coach D'Amico this year versus last year, and how do you think teams responding here in his second year as head coach? Yeah, I think, um, you know, teams know how dangerous we can be and, you know, they try to challenge us in, in many different ways, but I think D'Amico's done a good job of, you know, just keeping us motivated to, you know, understand that we have a target on our back, but at the same time, just accept it, embrace it, you know, fire, fire, with fire. So, you know, I definitely think that we've been able to do that. Um, but honestly, we haven't we haven't been able to, you know, play our best ball yet, and, and that's kind of a good thing because we're sitting here 4 on one not played our best ball yet, and, you know, I think now every single game we're taking steps to that, um, play a four-quarter game. So, you know, I definitely see, you know, just a lot, a lot of things going on the uprise for us. Yeah, of course. Four and one. I haven't played good football yet. Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. Houston Texans are supposed to suck forever, brother. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's, that was what was supposed to happen. Not anymore. You know it. You know it. You know it. Uh -huh. You know it. Damn right. Everybody in the back knows it. And then this guy shows up with D'Amico, and it's all flipped on its head immediately overnight. And that's good for the city of Houston. Good football fans down here. How's the crowd's been? Crowd's been insane? Yeah, it's been cool. Last game was like a playoff game. Um, it was pretty nice, and you know, it's, it's twelve o'clock game is a little a little different in Houston it's because you know uh, there's a lot to do out here. So uh, <laughs> we really don't get nobody until like first quarter. But um, the people who come early, thank you, appreciate it. But it's all love though. Like they they it's been loud though. It's been really loud. Like the Bears game was amazing for like a playoff game. The last game for like a playoff game. So. Um, you know, it's, it's, up, it's up on the uprise. Yeah, there's a lot to do down there in Houston. That's mm -hmm. why what you were able to do as a rookie down there without being distracted is uh, insane. There's another rookie coming, though. D-Bot's got a question for you. Yeah, CJ, you were kind of that outlier uh, last year coming in as a rookie, just being dynamic, picking up. I got a question, a question for you. Like, what was the biggest challenge for you coming in from college, obviously being a superstar at the college level, and then being the face of a franchise in the NFL, handling that week to week. And then what's your thoughts on Jaden Daniels and how he's performing early on in his rookie season? Yeah, I would say one of the biggest challenges is, you know, just finding your niche and finding, um, like, how you were so successful in college and now putting that to the league. Because um, the game really don't change. It's just a little nuances here and there. Um, but honestly, I feel like once I got comfortable, once I got confident is when I started playing really well. So um, I can see that with Jaden, but, you know, he hit the ground running from week one. Um, so, you know, I'm super proud of him. Talk to him almost every week. And, you know, just really just, you know, just a fan of his and what he's been able to do these last couple of weeks. And, you know, he's just, he just getting warmed up. So, you know, I hope that he continues to, you know, just stay uh, stay at it, stay hungry, and I know he will just because that's his personality. But you know, two two young IE kids from the same from the same area, uh, you know, just making plays, living out our dreams. You know, so it's just a blessing, and it's just a testament to like, man, you put your heart to something, you can really do it. And you know, it's not too hard for anybody because you know we're the ones that made it, and we come from really si similar situations. So uh, you know, I'm just super proud of him. Root him on every week and, you know, really hope that, you know, people see his value because, you know, last year I feel like since I was a rookie, people just kept on the rookie tag on me like, nah. Then one of y'all just said it like, nah, it's just good quarterback play, yeah. point blank period. So I hope people can see that. I like that you felt disrespected by people saying, this is the greatest rookie season of all time. <laughs> rookie, what are we, can we just talk about me as a quarterback as a whole? And I'll tell you what, right now everybody's doing that with C.J. Stroud. We can't thank you enough for joining us on this glorious Tuesday. What do you got the rest of the day? 
Man, I'm about to chill, watch movies, just try to get my mind off the game for a little bit. It's cool. You're going to text Caleb Williams? You know, you talk about... <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> You're the man. Yeah. You're the man. How do, are you, have you guys talked since then? Uh, no. You know, I, I wish him... Like, he played. He balled out last week. I'm happy for him, man. That's oh. dope. Seemed like he's getting his niche and his groove. Hell yeah. Happy to hear that. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who's going to be up for MVPs every single year from now until seemingly 2040. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) C.J. Stroud. Thank you, man.